Fandomaniacs. Hey everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Tan and Fandom's Hot Tag. I'm Mick. I'm Courtney. And this week was some pretty big news. Perhaps you heard there was a little <laughs> bit of a draft for the WWE. Uh, uh, uh. You know, little thing. Just a, a brand split, no big deal. You know, MBD. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, we did cover that in depth, so if you want to shoot over, check that video. Go to our channel, uh, WWE Draft Recap. Uh, yeah, I believe so. You know, but check that out. We go a little bit more in detail on it. Uh, so on this, we just wanted to kind of say, you know, it happened. It happened. Uh, biggest news out of it, Finn Balor is on the main roster. He got drafted to Raw. And to be called up to be the fifth pick overall, that's huge, I think. Yeah. I mean, that right there really speaks to what... NXT has become the importance that it's had because I think if you look at, you know, like Bo Dallas, for example, a former NXT champion, a legacy in the business yeah. drafted uh, at the 50th position. Right. Shows where NXT kind of was. Right. I think Finn shows where it is now because of how important he was to that brand. So huge, huge news for him to come up to the main roster. Mm -hmm. uh, it was fairly huge news that Bailey did not. Did not. It was a. Uh, it's a shame, but you know, I'm sure they have bigger ideas, more storylines for her. She's number one contender again. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Is uh, NXT showed us this week with her being the number one contender. Yeah, she's. That they're still utilizing her as the the right. face of NXT. Well, and they they took Carmella. Mm. They already took Dana. They're taking Alexa Bliss. Yep. You, know, you can't. You can't take that many women and expect the division in NXT to still be standing. Yep. So they, they took some key players, but they left the queen. Well, I, I think when you look at it, when Becky and Charlotte were both called up, there, in my opinion anyway, was a slight void uh, that NXT's women's division had. Because yes, you had Asuka still, you had Bayley, you had Nia Jax, and that was about it after that. Like, yeah. they kind of had to... They, they did, like, the Battle Royal, uh, yeah. went to crown the number one contender, and, you know, so it, it was kind of kind of difficult for a little bit because they had... Oh, Sasha, too, of course, coming up. You know, that, that was three big hits, and I think they were looking at that and keeping that in mind and saying, like, if we take Finn, Bailey, Samoa Joe, Nakamura, right. American Alpha, The Revival, you know, yeah. all these people at once, that is going to cripple NXT. Right, and you don't want to do that. It's just now, like, just, it's shooting off. Like, yeah. it's it's a top competing brand. If it wasn't under the WWE, the WWE would buy it. Like yeah, Absolutely. So, uh, outside of the WWE and NXT, there was some Ring of Honor news that happened to affect this household. <laughs> It's just, it's, Pretty big. It's so unreal. I can't even, I can barely even wrap my head around it. But, you know, as most of you know, I'm sure Stardust is no more. Cody Rhodes has left the WWE. What are you talking about? Cody Rhodes hasn't been in the WWE for like two years. <laughs> K-Fabe! <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, gone off to be an independent wrestler. He's working the cities, brother. Yep, working the towns, brother. Paper and towns. However, he has just signed in December, I think. Yeah, he will be making uh, December 2nd. December 2nd, he will be making his Ring of Honor debut. What? Cody Rhodes is going to be in the Ring of Honor. And he's quoted as saying, they can keep the paint, I'll take the honor. And I was like... <laughs> it's it's incredible which uh when this news came out it inspired me to come up with something new uh that we're going to kind of do on hot tag periodically whenever large or big news breaks and that will be bold predictions Ooh, and for my first and we're ball. looking into the crystal ball <laughs> and for my bold prediction right now I predict that Cody Rhodes will be the man to defeat Jay Lethal to become Ring of Honor World Champion. Now you might say that's not a very bold prediction and a very realistic possibility that, that could happen. But the other part of that, I also predict Cody Rhodes 
will start working for New Japan Pro Wrestling and be the first man to simultaneously hold the Ring of Honor World Title and the IWGP Heavyweight Championship at the same time. That's my prediction, Daddy! <laughs> so that is my bold prediction for this uh, pretty big breaking news yes, I'm for Cody. completely and utterly down with that prediction. I want to see Cody Rhodes with Kenny Omega. I want to see Cody Rhodes in the Bullet Club. I want to see... <laughs> That's the other thing, too. I do believe that if Cody does, in fact, go to New Japan, and even if he doesn't, because Bullet Club is an ROH, I do believe that we may see him join the Bullet Club. I want... A, the Prince Bullet Club shirt. He's... Do he's, it. Yeah. He's One such, hour tees, pro wrestling tees, do it. He's such a good heel. And the reason why I make that prediction, because if you look at Ring of Honor, if you look at New Japan, they approach wrestling from a very sport-based um, view. Right. You know, they treat it very much like a sport, you know, Japan especially. Cody Rhodes has a legacy of greatness behind him with his father, his older brother also being in the business for so long so you you couple the name Rhodes and the history that that has in the rest wrestling industry he can work he's an excellent worker he's Absolutely. a 10 year veteran <laughs> just look at Stardust that's all he did mm -hmm. he has a great look because he's a very good looking man uh, he very dashing if you would if he, you will <laughs> yeah he, he can talk he can kind of work any style that you need him to, but more importantly, and this is why I believe not necessarily uh, Japan would take advantage of this, but Ring of Honor would definitely take advantage of this. The fact that he is going to be on Season 5 of Arrow, that's mainstream appeal right there. <laughs> Even if he is there for two seconds on the show, gets his ass kicked, Ring of Honor can say, our world champion was on network television, and not yeah. to mention, it's one of the highest rated shows the CW has. Right, because he's done it before, he was on Warehouse 13, but that no has nowhere near the amount of cloud as Arrow. Yeah, so I think when you look at that, you look at the history between he and Stephen Amell, there's just, that that's <laughs> kind of the evidence to support my bold prediction. I'm not just coming out of, coming out here and being like, I'm going to make a bold prediction that Mojo Raleigh will beat John Cena for the WWE Championship tomorrow. So like, that's, like that's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's not a bold prediction. That's a stupid prediction. That, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of New Japan... Uh, that's a, a shucky-ducky quackpot theory. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Get book on the phone. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of New Japan, the G1 has started. Going pretty well so far. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Kenny did not win his opening match. I'm very upset about that. But neither did Tanahashi, so ha ah, I am not... <laughs> I'm not sad alone! She is also sad now. <laughs> He's coming off an injury. He has ring rust. He's just... <sighs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's pretty good. I'm interested to see who who's going to kind of win. Um, you know, I, I feel at this point it's really open. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Sonata working with Okada was awesome. I really like uh, Sonata's look and, like and style mask. and feel. Uh, we also got to see the second round of the Cruiserweight Classic yes. this week. Still exciting, fun, fun stuff. We had a, another luchador, so I was yes. happy with that. Lince Dorado. Lince Dorado with his teeth, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but more about that on our Cruiserweight Classic series. That's right, jump over to that video. We break everything down in detail over there. We have uh, two more weeks of the first round before we move on to the second round to get more eliminations, so yeah. truck, and li truck and ride along. That's true, and this was also another really strong week. Uh, not quite as many names, or at least like hot names in terms right. of like Cedric Alexander and Ibushi, um, but it, it was still really good. I, I, I enjoyed it. I think mm -hmm. it was good. Uh, TNA, there was, uh, I suppose, a slight bit of history made as Bobby Lashley defeated Eddie Edwards to become the TNA World Champion and the X Division Champion. How do you feel about this? Well, he's big enough to hold two belts, I guess. He is. I don't know. I feel like it's weird because the the X Division's kind of like their cruiserweights. I was going to say, when you know DJZ is the number one contender for that belt, <laughs> right. in what world 
of possibility does DJ Z defeat Bobby Lashley? Right. And that's kind of my issue with it. Like, Eddie Edwards, okay, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I like it because Bobby is a monster, he's a destroyer. Right. So I think that's cool to build him up. And he's a legit, you know, he, he does MMA, you know, yeah. so he's a, a badass. So in that regard, it works. I don't know. It just... Looking at the landscape of their X Division, I'm just like, oh. Yeah, and I was like, what's next? Is he going to take the knockout title, too? Is he... God, I hope so. That'd be is amazing. Is he going to take the Hardy name, too? Like, what, what else is he going to take? Bobby Lashley owns it. He has deleted. We'll just take some white chalk. And... Yeah, just... No, what, the, no, no, even better, because he wears the headband now. So you have a black headband, but have, like, one white spot on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> ah, broke. And Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Brother Nero! I've got an MMA contest later. Uh. <laughs> Fighting for the oofsa. <laughs> Billy Tor. <laughs> Billy Tor. <laughs> so, you know, another development that we're seeing more with TNA that you, I mean, I'm excited about this as well. But Brom and Rosemary, you know, <laughs> they, they started the Bound for Glory series and, you know, Brom saying, like, his goal is to win the TNA World title. And, yeah. and she's like, well, do you want me to help you? And he's like, I don't know. And then they <laughs> make out in their awesome, weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to see where this go is going. I think this is one of the more intriguing storylines that TNA has right now. I love everything they do with the Decay. It's to be really honest. cool. Because she's basically a female Bray. She kind of is! <laughs> but you can't really work like a sexy romance storyline with, like, with Bray Wyatt. Are you not into guys with beards? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not Bray. No offense, Bray. But, you know, that swampiness, I don't <laughs> You don't but... want to go to the Wyatt compound and have him whisper... Sweet nothings in your ear. Yeah. Run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a cool angle that yeah. hasn't really been done before because women don't really get to play these dark and ethereal roles. Not the way that Rosemary is doing. Rosemary is doing an awesome job. You know, it's funny. She recently uh, signed a another contract with TNA so that they handle her like independent bookings and stuff. I believe Crazy Steve and Abyss did as well. But it's funny because when she did, I was like, oh, okay, good for her. Now looking back at it, I I'm kind of like, I wonder if TNA wanted to lock her up longer because you know exactly who WWE would make her, Sister Abigail. Oh, she is so good shit. at what she's doing now. There you go. There you go. Just that would be awesome. Boop. Right yeah, they there. probably want to hang on to her longer because, like I said, she's one of the most interesting characters. She plays it really well. It's different. Yeah. Completely different. Like, I know Sue Young kind of plays that. Oh, she's fantastic, too. Yeah, but, you know, she's, she's not on TV. She's not tied up in storylines. Yeah. But Rosemary, Courtney Rush, she is fantastic. Yeah. Really enjoy her stuff. So, you know, we got to see... I don't want to say a changing of the guard because that's a, not at all what happened, but Prince Puma and Rey Mysterio Jr. had a match at uh, Ultimate Lucha and... Uh, Ultimate Lucha Trace? Dos? Uh, dos, yeah. Dose. Um, so, for those that don't know, Ricochet is done with Lucha Underground. Uh, he will not be appearing with them anymore. Uh, so, Prince Puma. Well, and that's a question, too. Couldn't, in theory, they keep the Prince Puma character going? I mean, it would be weird because it would obviously be a different person <laughs> but um yeah, tattoos, I don't know. you know i if i want to be honest i think that's a that's that hurts for lucha because ricochet is is absolutely incredible i mean the guy is insanely amazing yeah he's he's really good uh but maybe they'll utilize like kill shot more yeah that's true pentagon jr seems to really that it, to me like he and Phoenix seem to be the two guys that they really want to do a lot of stuff with. Especially because Phoenix just became the first ever Lucha, Lucha Underground Triple Crown Champion. Well then. Yep. So, there you go. That right there <laughs> says a lot, you know, and... Clearly, they have people like Mundo. Johnny Mundo is is awesome. 
but he is an older guy. Not he's not like ancient or anything, but he's right, an older but he's been guy. In business for a while now. He's an older guy. He's not Latino, so you really have to wonder, like, with him and with like Cage and the Mac, like, how high are these guys' ceilings in terms of really going the distance for Lucha? And yeah. part of me wonders, is that? A little bit of a reason why with Ricochet he's not Latino so is that maybe why I mean yeah Prince Puma is a character he's in a mask so you can make whatever story about him you want but right. yeah part of me wonders like is that why is it just he was like no I want to do different things I want to work in Japan full-time which is one of the things he is doing maybe he wants to travel more with Tessa yeah and he hasn't mentioned that like his game plan you know he does intend uh, at one point to end up in WWE because it's the biggest platform for you to go to so uh, and Tessa his Tessa his wife girlfriend girlfriend I believe girlfriend has done work with NXT yeah she is a legacy with the company Tessa Blanchard uh, he's roommates with Apollo Crews <laughs> so, yeah they're best buddies yeah um, so I think that's that's really what it comes down to I, although I will say I, I brought it up because I want to specifically mention man Rey Mysterio looked great like he looked fantastic yeah. in that match I have not seen him work like that in years I don't want to be like, it was like 1996 Rey Mysterio. <laughs> Wait a minute, uh, more like 2005 Rey Mysterio, but still, so good. really good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think that uh, pretty much wraps us up in terms of uh, all the big news yeah, this week. Yeah, that's all the news for this week. Uh, but before we go, before we, uh, you know, let us know what you think in the comments below and all that good stuff that we always say. Uh, there's one thing that I wanted to do. Uh, Spreading a little love out there. Little, the power of positivity. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. And more wrestling, brother. Um, but uh, <laughs> my sister-in-law, her sister, uh, Kelly West, had a really tough week this week. It was like... This week was the shits. It was or, the drizzling shits. It was indeed. It was the Eva Marie of weeks. Ah. So, that being said, uh, Kelly, we love you. We love all the support that you give us. And we ask you wonderful <laughs> uh, Fandomaniacs out there, send some love and positive vibes to our sister, Kelly. We love you, Kelly. Ah. <laughs> that being said, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure to like subscribe, and share the video. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more sweet dance moves. Yeah, I don't know why. I was just like, I've got <laughs> like, like a, yeah. like an Al Boom. Punch dancing. <laughs> Punch dancing. <laughs> got like an Alex Ray thing going on here. Uh, okay, well as we always say, Fanny Maniacs, if you're gonna be a fan, bring a friend.